plans and how not making plans was the best way to go about things. I think. Why can't I remember my own content? If you're someone like me, you often say things to pump yourself up that you don't mean. I wouldn't say you're lying to yourself when you do that. I mean, a dictionary might, but I wouldn't say that. Sometimes you need that self-assurance even if you're not gonna do that thing anytime soon. Like, just because you say you're gonna go to the gym today and then you don't go, doesn't mean you're not gonna ever go to the gym, it just means you're gonna eventually go to the gym and when you do, that day will be your today. Now you may think I'm delusional. Eventually you're going to say that thing to yourself so much that you'll either amp yourself up enough to go, annoy yourself with how often you bail on your own word and go, or stop talking about it completely, bury it, and forget you even said it in the first place. That last thing is what actually happened to me in the gym, but if for those of you that like full circles, the very first thing is what happened to me and the idea of planning. After I made that mysteriously ambiguous video about planning, I really convinced myself that I didn't need to ever make any plans, that I was shockingly impulsive and the world was gonna love me the way I was hatched. I was like really into it too, like I got irrationally annoyed when people tried to schedule plans with me more than a day in advance. For some reason it just pissed me off to have to stick to those plans, like it was impeding on my sexy becoming impulsiveness, like it was harshing my mellow freaking yellow, you feel me? Why should I have to agree to stick to a plan when so many things can happen between when you made the plan and when the plans be died? Freaking ridiculous! So I kept that up throughout the time that I was in school, and it was cool because, you know, Everyone feels like college is real life. It's not. And you have so much responsibility. You don't. And I was killing the game by not planning, just by going with the flow. I was really an all-star college student. Not in the way of academics, specifically in the way that I was a student at a university who lived day to day without dying or getting arrested. But I'm gonna tell you a little story about how that all came crashing down after I decided to move off campus and into my first apartment and failed to plan, and so I ended up homeless and couch hopping for two weeks before we found a place to live. Well, uh, that's really the whole story. All right, well, video over. Finding a place to rent is really one of those things where waiting till the last minute or until, you know, you have the funds for it is probably your best bet. At least where I live currently it is. I don't know about y'all. And that's like basically because you can't typically hold your apartment until you have the money for it. Landlords want their money and they want their money now. I'd also like to say that this is not official renting advice. This is just how I see it. So basically because of that idea, I was in the mother freaking limelight. You're telling me I don't have to secure a plan other than make enough money to find a place to live? What? That sounds like what I'm all about. So that's what I did. I focused on the money and made as much as I could and didn't worry about the rest and I was great and I was in the fast lane and in my elemental, except no. It wasn't great at all. I was in the fast lane to hell. When summer was over, I had the money, but I hadn't been researching what I need to know about moving into my first apartment. I hadn't been thinking about what I should be looking for in apartments and landlords. I hadn't been paying attention to the market. I was just living day to day, and it slowly was turning into day to death. The semester had begun, I had nowhere to live, I didn't secure a spot on campus as a backup plan. I was officially in the slow lane figurative cars were passing me at light speed, slowing just enough so their children in the backseat could point and laugh at me. Short story shorter, I couch hopped for two weeks before we finally found a place to live. Full on singular thanks to my best friend Hannah, who has always been the Lisa Frank Sparkly Unicorn Planner to my fifth grade last day of school book bag. And I've been planning ever since. Sometimes it really takes extreme situations like that to jar you out of the toxic mental state that you're in because you're so wrapped up in it that you just can't see where you are. And though my failure to be responsible led to me having a less than desirable living situation for a short amount of time, it still wasn't as bad as it could have been because I could have gone home to live with my parents if I really had to. I mean, it wasn't good, but it wasn't the worst. Moral of the story? Don't wait till day of to plan your YouTube video because you'll end up disguising your procrastination as a topic. And also, planning can be your friend. I mean, at least create a mental outline for yourself so you can get halfway through it, realize it's not working, and throw that crap away. Ha! You thought I'm not planning shit!